how to build a house without building skills or money? That's a question. Sweat equity is the answer. One of my favorite scriptures is in James 1, 2 to 4. I'll read it to you. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. What James is saying is, you know, whenever you run into trials, tribulations, frustrations, hard tasks, you need to persevere through them, push through them. And that's how you build a house without building skills or money. Life is a learning process, all of it. From the moment you're born into this world, you're learning something. How to walk, how to ride a bike, how to encourage a friend, how to overcome fear, how to ask a pretty girl to the dance, dance. play the guitar, fix your first muscle car start a business or build a house. Fight for what's right, encourage a friend, overcome fear, raise children. We don't know how to do anything in life until we fail at it and fail at it until we get it right from falling off a bike to building a house. That's the first step in being good at anything, getting rid of the fear of failure you know, or mockery or criticism, all of these things that are of this world that keep you from just doing it, doing the work, laying the first brick, like Nehemiah, rebuilding the wall. I've seen a lot of friends. We're all pretty old now. Let fear get in the way from trying. I think it was Pablo Picasso that said something like, put off for tomorrow the things you're okay with taking to your deathbed. In other words, if you're not going to do them, you know, your tombstone may read one day he was going to, and that's a sad thing. I've been putting out videos. I have about 94, 95 videos on YouTube. And it's about some of the work we've done here at the, our home, especially the recent stuff. And I started looking at it going, you know, this doesn't even tell the story. It's kind of like Chip and Joanna Gaines. You know, you watch an episode and it's like, ooh, look at that, how beautiful, and just half hour, wow. And it looks like all fun and games. It's not true. It's a lot of hard work, blood and sweat, fear, taking risk. But, Years before Chip and Joanna Gaines were even out of high school, we were building houses. I got out of the U.S. Navy in 1973, right after Vietnam, and decided I wanted to do something. I wanted to build a house, own a little piece of land, and live a life. So back then, I didn't even have a job, but you could get a loan based on character. And I got a loan, bought 40 acres of land. And then I thought, well, I don't know anything about building a house. I don't even have the tools. And some of the tools I don't know how to use anyway. So I started looking around and I found these Lindall Cedar homes out of Seattle. 
they're, they're not a kit house, but they're cut and, and plans. And it's like putting together a big puzzle. So we bought uh, the model that has a gambrel roof, which is a roof that looks like a barn. And these are all cedar, the outside cedar, the inside cedar, 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 because we love wood. So we bought it and they shipped it here to Minot, North Dakota. The railroad called me and said, hey, your stuff, your car, your railroad car is out of siding with a loading dock. You got to get that unloaded in uh, three days. I had made arrangements to, uh, with a local farmer close by who had a Quonset hut where I could store everything. So we borrowed a truck and started hauling all the windows and wood and everything. And after, once we got it all unloaded, I, I was standing in that Quonset hut and I was thinking, what have I done? I can't do this. I don't know anything about it. But with anything, you'll learn with time. So started digging a hole, putting in a foundation and putting together the pieces. We got it done in about 14 months and it wasn't done. As I walked around in that 14 months, I, I learned enough to look at it and go, uh, this is terrible. I have to redo it. So we did. Didn't even wait for a minute. We started to remodel and I had learned enough and we realized what we want in a house. And we got pretty creative with everything. First off, too much cedar. So we did put some drywall in we got used bricks from the old roundhouse in Minot, the railroad roundhouse. Used them, put in brick archways, built a south-facing solar greenhouse on the side. The gambrel had an old, long, big overhang in front, and we enclosed that. Did a lot of creative stuff, as you can see in these photographs. Then I decided to go into business. I was in electronics in the Navy, so opened a computer store called ProTech. Eventually we started doing data entry for local hospitals for transcription. But I wasn't a businessman, made a lot of mistakes, and the business went bankrupt. We had offered the house as collateral. We were just confident there'd be no problem. So we lost the first house, put our heart and soul into it. So we picked up the pieces. And while we were building that house, my mother always wanted a lake cabin. And I found a little house uh, that they gave away. We just had to move it off the lot. We put in a wood basement on the lot that my mom got, M moved that little house onto it and did some design work and started building this home that I'm in right now. And it also had a south facing greenhouse, a lot of wood, cedar and drywall and wood burning stove. The first house had wood burning stove, and that's one of the common design elements we've always had, wood burning stoves. It's just wonderful. Cedar is another one. And landscaping. In that original house, I planted over 10,000 trees. It's a forest there now. The people I bought it, though, turned it into a box. But it's their house. So 
we had no place to go but into this, the cabin here, the house we still have and always have had. And we made it ours. But then the economy was terrible. And uh, I wound up, we wound up moving out to Washington, D.C., because there was a lot of employment there. We rented for a while, ran into uh, someone that said, hey, um, I've got a house that desperately needs some work. I want to sell it. Would you fix it up for free rent and a little extra cash? Couldn't pass it up. Rent's expensive in Washington, D.C., in the surrounding area. So we fixed that house up in Chevrolet, Maryland, put our heart and soul in it. When it was done, he sold the house, and that person that bought that almost 25, 30 years ago still lives there. She loves it. With the, after that, we decided we need to have our own home. And they were giving out these no questions asked mortgages, high risk, and we got one, a crazy cost, like 14% interest. It was in a development, and again, it's a blank piece of paper. We moved in for a while and decided we have to make it ours. So we started landscaping again. Landscaping is a common thing, and we decided to landscape because there again, it's a long pole and a tent. It takes time for trees to grow and bushes to grow and everything, the hardscape and softscape. We refinished the basement and did again, a lot of wood, south facing windows, solar panels. We did an addition with a curved front under the deck. Again, very nice. And that's where I started to learn trim and get better and better at finish work. So we got that finished, sold it. We had built up a lot of sweat equity and the market was hot. We sold it and we took that money and we came back here to the cabin and said, we want this to be our forever home. So we started fixing it up and we ran into some real issues. Oh, she's money pit issues. Like the main water line bursting under the foundation, like having to repair all that, then opening up a wall and finding carpenter ants and eating the heck out of it. So finally, we just had to tear the bulk of the original cabin down and start all over again. At the same time, we took some of that money and we always had a dream to be someplace warm in the winter. And we loved Hawaii because my job had taken me over, us over there several times. So we found a development with an, and a floor plan that we liked and we bought a house over there in Eva Beach. That wasn't easy getting that loan either. But as soon as we got in there, we were sitting and then went out in the backyard to barbecue. We said, this doesn't feel like Hawaii, doesn't look like Hawaii. Let's make this house Hawaiian. So again, a brand new house. The neighbors thought we were crazy. We started tearing out the cabinets, ripping out the carpet, and we remodeled the entire house. We started again with landscape so that when we were in the backyard, it felt and looked like Hawaii. We finished that place and we lived there 12 years. And then we decided it's a hassle having two houses. So we sold it and we had a lot of sweat equity and the market was wild again. God has been watching out for us all the way. So we came back here to make this our forever home. And I've been shooting a lot of the videos around here that are already out on YouTube, you'll see from the garage, the barn dominium. 
And I wanted to do this intro just to say, look, in this world today, everybody wants instant gratification. Just buy it. New. Perfect. Nobody wants to put in the work. Everybody thinks that they can just have it. Well, I believe people need to understand it all requires work. And if you don't put the work in anything, whether it's a house, a garden, learning to play guitar, music, whatever, art, it'll never be yours and nothing that you can really appreciate and be proud of. We're still working on this house right now. I'm in the great room, I guess, right now. And there's baseboards to put on. There's tile to be laid in a the shower. There's always work to do. Weeds to pull in the yard. So I wanted to do this just to tell everyone that you have to put your heart and soul in something. And then it won't be a house anymore. It'll be home. So I hope you enjoy this intro. I'm going to be doing videos independent on each one of these houses. Minot, North Dakota, the house there. This, we always call it the cabin. Truly, the name of this place is Old Crow on the Rocks at Whiskey Bay. The Chevrolet remodel, the Germantown, Maryland remodel, Hawaii remodel, and this house that we've built now and rebuilt four times. So that's a total of six houses and two remodels. So if you want to take a lesson from this, don't count on just buying it and have an instant gratification. It's going to take time. You have to plant trees. You have to do some work. And that's the message. I hope you like it. And I hope you like the other videos I'm going to do about this adventure and the perils of it all. <laughs>